Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Packer Universe podcast, a.k.a. the Pup List. We're a Green Bay Packers fan podcast that brings you topical and relevant Packers news along with our most humble subjective opinions. This is episode 294. We're recording this on a Wednesday, November 6th, 2024. The Packers got beat up by the Lions at home in week nine, but now the Packers have a bye week to get healthy, self-scout, and to hopefully get better. I'm your host, Tay, and joining me on the comms in video is our one and only... Ren, what up, Tay? How you not, doing? Not too much. Do I'm doing all right. It's hump day, halfway through the week. The bye week is here, Ren. We got trounced this past week by the Lions. Um, we went over that pretty much, th- pretty thoroughly, I thought, in our first takeaway. I think that, we did. That um, went up Sunday night. Got a lot of views on YouTube on that one, so I appreciate everyone showing up. Again, Absolutely. it's uh, it's a, it's it's the Lions fans showing up to our YouTube channel, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all you right. Know, you're hey, they you're welcomed in. Subscribe and like. They want to hear us. Give them some love. Apparently, they heard it on the prior <laughs> episode that uh, yeah. I picked them picked them a win, not you. You were you yeah. you're over it. it. That's yeah. that's fine. That's fine. But uh, yeah, yeah. I I didn't expect such a uh, you know a pounding. I guess like mistake ridden. The Packers shot themselves in the foot. They played like trash. I mean, there was a few bright spots, you know, Josh Jacobs, but I mean, really what else was there that you can hang your hat on and, and feel comfortable and good about it? Just, it did in the end, it just, it just sucked. Like they didn't, they couldn't show up and play an awesome game. You know, they started off with that Nixon, like 15 yard on sportsman, like conduct penalty. He goes out of bounds. I don't mean, I don't even know what that was. I thought that was BS when I saw it. I thought he got like kind of pushed into like there. I don't know if there was something it was, afterwards it was, that he was. It was, was ticky tack day, and everybody it's said like, it was. It, it was. just seemed like it set the stage for everything that happened during the game. It was like, oh, really? This is, is this what's going to happen this game? Yeah. Well, it did. It did happen. Uh, harbinger, so, yeah. Tay, a harbinger of things to come. Yeah. Maybe. And like Matt Lafleur says, like, yeah, you know, those unsportsmanlike conduct. I'll I'll sit you out. I'll, I'll I'll put you right beside me. There's no no place for that. And it was I think that was in reference to talking about Keyshawn Nixon. And I was like, dude, that wasn't even a penalty on him. Like he didn't do anything wrong. It's just the the refs can call stuff like that all the time, and it doesn't make sense. You can't go back yeah. and replay it. It's just ridiculous. Um, but I think that kind of set the tone for the whole game. But go back, listen to our first take. We you know get on the Packers' butts about it, and uh, rightfully so. So. We're going to the bye week here. Um, we had we had a scheduled interview today, but that uh, that's going to get postponed for a few weeks. So so please stick around. We weren't uh, you know uh, stringing you along, so to speak. But we do have a guest coming up. Think, uh, things come up. Things come up. Yeah, things we'll come make, up and happen. So some issues with you know family and hey, things get postponed, and it's not yeah. an uncommon thing in the sports world. And and we'll talk but, soon. And we look forward to those conversations. And hey, it's a bye week anyway, so we hope. Uh, said person hopefully is getting a little time off so yeah give it a little teaser there but that's it i, I guess i i can it's not like 100 percent, but it's more like 95 we're gonna go talk to joey christopoulos next week about the upcoming bear game so a- absolutely uh, joey's going on like, and we're gonna yeah we're gonna get all over his <laughs> stupid bear fandom but about his butt love for caleb and you know they're yeah. they're kind of hey. in the they're kind of in the throes right now, Tay. Of it's crumbling yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Like after I can't the hail wait mary, to ask him. after the hail mary, and then last week they got their ass kicked. It's they're they're starting yeah. to be like you know the old Bears fans that we love and know. <laughs> like everything in their world is just falling apart. We yeah. love to see it. We love to see it. And the Packers are gonna come off a bye and whip their ass. We love to see that too. And they're gonna cry about it. They're gonna cry a lot about it. And wonder why they haven't beat Matt Lafleur yet in the Green Bay Packers, and, and it's great. And how how we'll quickly can this can that. that change for them? Like, it, and we'll talk about this. I want to ask Joey, like, what's going on here? Because all of a sudden it's like boom, flip, 180 degrees. I don't know what's going on down in Chicago, but uh, yeah, they had that that hail mary that just like you know if that was us and it has been in the past, like 
can take you games from now on a high. And <laughs> they seem to just like, and then die. Well, bomb. I mean, they had their cornerback and their safety was like taunting the fans there. I forget his name. He's like yeah. running on the sideline. The play's not going off yet. And then the ball's going. You see him like, whoop, I got to go. And he, and I believe he ends up, the guy ends up being the guy who tips the ball and just like, bloop, right into the hands of the waiting commander's receiver and ball game. Bears lose. Uh, and then they get, it. like I said, then they got their ass kicked this week against what the Cardinals. We just kicked their ass a couple weeks ago. So <clears throat> love to see it. Love to see the Bears fans in pain, spiraling. The, the season's starting to spiral away, away from them. They are still going to finish fourth in division, you know. Good on them. We we know it's a, a place they're very comfortable being. Um, before we get more to Joey and his terrible bears, but like rewinding the tape a little bit back to the the loss against the Lions, we know that once again penalties were atrocious. The Packers' red zone futility continues to be awful. Uh, third down stuff as far as conversions go tends to still be awful um but the big thing is what i heard in the presser post game today malafleur was making all sorts of excuses for jordan throwing that ball Mm -hmm. and i was like matt you better hammer your boy if you're not doing it behind the scenes you're not leading this team right i'm serious today I, I was mad. I, I agree. When, I, mean, when I, I heard when I heard the live comments to the media, I was like, "Why do you sound like you're making excuses for that awful, never should throw it throw?" That's bullshit. Be a leader. Be the head coach, Jordan. You threw a bad ball. You should never be rolling your right, throwing across your body, in the rain, like in a position that it's never going to work. That is like every you don't ever do it NFL play. Like, and there were like three calls in that play that you don't do this. And yet, Matt, it's like, well, you know, Kirby Joseph made a really good play. He's one of the best safeties in the NFL. Right, 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 right. And, right. and Josh Jacobs is there. He can see Josh. Did you hear that? I was pissed, Dave. When yeah, I heard that, Ren, I was yeah, like, but what, what, the what did hell, you, Matt? What, Ren, the what hell, did you dude? expect here? Ren, what, what did you expect here? This is. This is Matt Fleur's mo. He he takes the bullet. He always takes the, the blame. He doesn't want to ever do that. Pass it on unless it's like a coach or something. Um, but he this is him. This is what he's gonna do. So yeah, he's gonna find Jordan's all those little things. Dude. Own own him, like yeah, Jordan. You, P- you publicly, gotta work he's to not get gonna. There. He's not gonna. He's not gonna. What, what what is he? Are already Aaron Rodgers ilk with Matt? Like does he have something on Matt? Like come on. <laughs> like just just <clears throat> tell tell the kid. Yeah, you sucked at that moment. That was that was a crappy play. It was stupid. You should never do it. Don't do it in my offense. It's don't do it in any offense. It's not advised. It's a bad play. That's what you say. That's it, Tay. There's there's no yeah. there's no sugar no, co- coating or you know pussy footing around that stuff, Tay. You just have to put it out there. And I, and honestly, I, I was kind of upset with Lafleur for kind of giving him a pass on it. He publicly he gave him the pass public. We have no idea what happens beyond closed doors. True. But this is this that is Matt's matter. mo. This is what he does. This is what he does. He deflects it, and he's not going to throw his quarterback under the bus. I agree with you. He should have. You know, he he shouldn't be doing that necessarily in the way he he does do that. But uh, what's all hope and cross our fingers that he did? But I mean, you brought it up. I mean, Jordan Love is 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 Jordan Love going to the second half of the season? Ran a liability, or are you still willing? And we talked about this earlier in the season. Are you willing to roll with this kind of stuff? Yeah, as long as we we're winning and things are going our way, you know, is he gonna, you know, these Aaron, Aaron and well, not Aaron balls, Brett balls, are they are they okay? Are you okay with that? And we got another pick six from him, you know, and it's like, can that happen? So where where are you at with this? Is this is he a liability if he keeps playing like this? Again, I, I don't want Malik in there today. Jordan can play and move the offense better than anybody else can. Nobody's coming in, certainly not Malik Willis, that has has the rapport of the wide receivers, can do the things downfield. Sure, take this, this offense still put up 411 yards. Now, could they have been better and certainly scored more in the red zone to make this thing more competitive late? Yeah. And then you put a little pressure on the Lions to actually do something in the second half. The Lions, again, they, they were ball game after coming out with the first drive in the second half and being like, 
yeah, 24-3, we're good. But, you know, listen, Jordan holds the keys to the offense. Does he have to get better at that? That was my big thing, my big take with you on the first take. I'm sick of it. I'm sick and tired of it. Like, he, he's got to stop doing that. Again, we, we laughed, but also frustratedly laughed that he almost did that late in the game again. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. stop being a joker. He knows better. This is the guy that went, what, you know, nine touchdowns to one interception the last seven, eight, nine games of the season last year. He, know, he knows better. He learned from the best. Now, does that mean he can't throw three interceptions the last X, Y, Z games of the season or four? Sure. But on the clip he's going, it's awful. It's terrible. He's not protecting the ball. He needs to have somebody scream in his face about it and be like, you can't do that anymore, Jordan. It's ridiculous. You lead the league in the NFL with interceptions. You missed two games, by the way, guy. So you better rein that crap in <laughs> because you're an embarrassment at this point. You you have great arm talent. We're, we're giving you a lot of nice things on offense that put you in good position to win. Go, go. Just get it done on the field. And – Live to, live to throw another down sometimes. There's nothing wrong with throwing the ball out of bounds at times, Tay. Nothing. Yeah. So it is bye week. You know, you got to look at some things. I, I wanted to bring up that about Jordan Love and ask you what you thought about that because that is becoming, you know, a, a topic of interest is, is his gunslinging and is it a detriment to the team or not. Uh, I, I would say I'm – I would say those plays that he's just like, oh yeah, this is gonna work out. I'm gonna throw it, you know, close to the guy, or maybe he'll get it, and at least at least, at least it'll be the completion. Um, and they turn into a pick six. Oh, that just is is unacceptable. Yep. I know. What, I know what he's trying to do. We all know what he's trying to do, but it just didn't work, and you can't do that. So throw the ball away. He knows you better. See, he's smart he, enough you, kid you, to know better. Yeah, absolutely. You see, veteran yeah. quarterbacks do it all the. Um. But one area that we've <clears throat> struggled in all season run is that pass rush. We, yeah. we, we've seen it from game one. Uh, you know, it, it shows up from, at, from time to time. But generally speaking, we stink at the pass rush. And now, yesterday, Tuesday, was the trade deadline. And, <clears throat> you know, we're all like, eh, we're probably not doing anything. The Packers, they're not going to do anything. <laughs> And, of course, you know, you're we, like, yeah. that's the way we feel about it because they never. Oh yeah, because it never happens. Um, and so I'm thinking, yeah, they, you know, they won't trade for somebody, but I never thought we would give someone away and not get some something back. But three o'clock, Central Standard Time came and went, and we traded <laughs> Preston Smith, the last of the Smith brothers, to Pittsburgh for a seventh round pick. However. They do pick up and release some cap issues with him and his contract, which is the only thing. And I think everyone's pointing to that. Everyone's pointing to the fact that he, you know, was going to cost us a lot. He was like one of the top three players that were that was going to, you know, hamper us down in the next few years with cap money. Um, and he's, you know, growing old. And but I don't know. I, I was surprised, shocked that this happened. I thought he was a good player this year, especially like he he still was good. But evidently, um, the writing was on the wall. We just learned, I think, today that he, in fact, two weeks ago had asked for a trade. He thought he didn't play well in our system as uh, you know effectively as, as he wanted. And I think the Packers did say, yeah, I think you're right. And so they kind of waited till the trade deadline day to do it. But we yep. find out now that he, in fact, did want to trade, and he's okay with it. So after hearing that, I think I'm, I'm a little less, you know, on the Packers' hate for that trade. If he truly asked for a trade and wanted out, okay, I understand that. Great. Let's do that. It, it actually works out, the, you know, as a benefit for the Packers um, with the salary cap and the money savings later on. Um, and you're, again, making this team younger and younger, uh, giving them more opportunities to, you know, yep. get other free agents or pay other players that will be around a lot longer and produce a lot longer than Preston was. But to your point, I know you you called it out. He's a great locker room guy, and he's a, 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 a veteran leadership role that is now gone, and you're left with 
what Inning Barre, Rashawn Gary, and who Van Ness? Like where's he been? Got uh, Mosby, Jay. Mosby, the guy who what, what was that? Uh, did he was it that He's the sack it. strip? Sack He's strip. Killing it, dude. Just nailing Forget it. about so, our boy Aaron. A A Ron. So yeah, we got we got four four guys that were were uh, and we didn't pick anybody up. So how how are you feeling about this? What what did your what was your first thoughts about the the Preston Smith thing? What what does it all mean, Ren? I, I need to hear it. Well, again, you know, you saw I tweeted it when it first happened. I was like, I remember hearing about this like two three weeks ago. Like they could trade Preston even when they're playing well at the yeah. trade down. I'm like, huh? why? This guy's been a leader for years. He's, literally like your oldest veteran on the team if not if he's not the oldest he's your second oldest i'm like everybody likes him their their pass rush this year has been awful i mean nobody rashawn gary got the big the big contract and he has not adjusted into <clears throat> half of the defense as far as that's concerned so when i first heard it, i was like man really like i hope they're making a move in the next hour to get a Another edge rusher, or Re- they could have used a, they, they could have used a cornerback too. I was like, sure, give me a cornerback, yeah. give me an edge rusher. It's, it's all good. I'm good. And, and obviously, you see the things like this year still saves them two point whatever on the cap. Next year, seven point X. And I think the final year after that, it's like eighteen point six. Pretty yeah. massive. That yeah. Pittsburgh's taking on all that. They'll figure that own their that own stuff on their own part. Um, so it, it brought the Packers 2024 cap effectively up to like 16 million, which isn't great. But then the year following Tay, they have, I want to say 60, 70 million dollars. <laughs> Same with the following. And the following year, they have 150. I mean, we're all it's, in then. We're all in then. It's, it's, it's like crazy town, Tay. So, I mean, it made sense. He, you know, he's not going to be productive in the system. He wanted to trade out. We find that out. I think Ari Mirov was the first to point that out, that they were amical about it. Like, hey, Preston was like, yeah, I don't know if this new system fits. That's great. And the Packers come to terms. It's always nice to have a break where everybody agrees. Like, it's amicable. Yeah. Everybody wins the point. At this point, other than cap, the Packers aren't winning the short term on this day. They're going to miss Preston from that locker room. And, yeah, mm-hmm. they're thin. Just production they're thin. lines. They're thin. Like, you go to the playoffs if this is your – Edge rush group, if you make the playoffs, not great. And there's not much they can do there. So, no. well, and last year, Ren, it certainly didn't last, help themselves out. No, and, and last year, we saw this happen, but then we just relied on the, the backups. We, we relied on our depth. And it, <clears throat> to, I guess, to their point, it worked out. So maybe they, they're just saying, well, we're going to work with what we have. Let's, we're going to maybe, you know, bring in some guys, or whatever we're going to do to, you know, get that depth to depth. But, we got four guys right now. That's what we're going to do. And obviously that's all they can do besides hiring or yeah, um, bringing in free agents. But I just thought, I just thought if you're going to, you know, subtract one, you, you, you should at least try to add another. And maybe they did try. Who knows? We're always in the I'm, conversation. Right. I'm sure that they talked about things. There were some players in Miami. There are players in New York that being the giants, that would have been interesting. Um, certainly didn't come to fruition, but you know, in the modern Brian Gudikins era, Tay, they've never done that. Yeah, and, yeah. and no I, I kind of made. Uh, just a warning for you, my sound just went low, so I'm not sure what situation is here. No, but you sound good to me. Battery uh, could be an issue. Critical. Well, I tweeted out that uh, the Packers, um, if they did anything, if they got anybody that would show them, show us. There, there was a weakness on the roster if they were going to trade for somebody. I never thought they were going to trade away somebody. So now, obviously, we think that they're, you know, at a deficiency here at pass rusher. Um, you know, they have to also probably think that too. But whatever, they're going to roll with it. So it's, you know, do you go as far as, like, they're giving up this season. This is it. They're call, they're cashing in. They're calling it in. Uh, it, you know, and I don't think so because if that was the case, it wouldn't be for a seventh-round pick. That's... To me, that's nothing. Well, I mean, it's uh, cost this was an that, again, if you wanted out and everybody agreed, yeah, it's really not about giving up anything other than, hey, we can get out of some salary cap. You're not happy in the situation. So everybody's going to get the best out of this that they can and move forward. Uh, I don't ultimately think that, you know, not having Preston 
causes major things to happen to the defense. They're still going to need to simulate pressure. I'm, I'm sure Halfley can come up with a few wrinkles <clears throat> to do that, but they have to still get better at it because they still not been good at it all year, Ty. Well, I think just in general, like we've seen this happen before, um, you know, in the offseason, Aaron Jones goes to the Minnesota Vikings. It's a fan. He's a fan favorite. It hurts. Preston Smith. He's a fan favorite. We love him. We hate as fans when this happens to people we like on the team. And this is a perfect example. Like, oh, we hate to see him go, but he's going. So now we have to deal with it somehow. And our reaction is going, well, now we're going to suck. Or are they are they throwing in the towel? Like, What's going on? But in the end, I think it's going to be all all right, um, especially with the cap savings. And it's a deal they both wanted. So he, I guess you can't fault that. But, Ren, after that game oh. last Sunday, we were in our alternative throwback green uniforms with the yellow helmets. Now we're one and one with alternate uh, jersey uniforms this year. We won once in the winter warning against the Texans, and then we lost one against the Lions. I don't know if there are any other scheduled uniform switches this year with throwbacks, but uh, we're one and one. I guess is that uh, is that? Do you read into that anyway? He does not. I think he's frozen. He is frozen. <clears throat> so I'm gonna have to answer that myself. I don't think it has a, anything to do with wins loss record. I hope that we see the winter warning again this year. I mean, is that going to be a one-year thing every year? I, I don't know. You guys tell me. If you know what the schedule is for this alternate uniform situation with the Packers, please contact us. Uh, you can email us, info at PackerUniverse.com. Go to our socials and send it over. And uh, <laughs> Ren cannot do anything, so we're just going to look at him while he's frozen. Uh, this is great. But uh, that pretty much does it. For this episode, uh, it's 294. Uh, we appreciate everyone listening, subscribing, following us along, and subscribing to the podcast. Again, uh, you can check out our website, packeruniverse.com. Uh, and then again, just appreciate all the support that you guys have given us. Next week, we're going to talk to Joey Christopoulos of the Bears, find out what's going on down there in Chicago. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I got a lot of major questions to ask. Uh, and I'm looking forward to his answers. So, again, thank you. Uh, Ren says goodbye, I'm sure. Uh, and so so uh, for tonight, I appreciate it, and I will talk to you guys later until episode 295 on The Pup List. <laughs>